all rise for the procession. Good evening, parents, board members, administrators, teachers, and inductees. Welcome to the 2022 induction ceremony for the Laura Moyer, Moyer chapter of the National Honor Society at Gloversville High School. My name is Braden Patterson, and as president of the National Honor Society, I would like to congratulate our students who have been selected by our faculty for successfully completing their candidacy. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, Guests, we hope this will remind you of the standards of excellence you maintain as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Please give a round of applause for current members of the National Honor Society. At this time, please help me welcome our principal, Mrs. Christina Elias. Good evening. Before getting started, I would first like to thank our Honor Society advisors, Mr. Ken Illy and Ms. Jennifer Hazard for this wonderful evening. I would also like to thank Mrs. Diane Ma, the Director of the Loft, for the creation of certificates for our inductees. The Loft honors the qualities exemplified by National Honor Society scholars in their effort to build a positive community. The Loft Outreach Program presents a certificate of congratulations to those whose achievements include pursuing high standards for themselves, an investment in others, and impacting their community in a positive way. Thank you, Mrs. Ma and The Loft. At this time, I would like to welcome our guests, the parents, guardians, family, and friends of these distinguished scholars. A significant reason we are here today is the love, support, guidance, and influence you have provided these inductees. Induction into the National Honor Society is an extraordinary accomplishment and is a recognition of the years of hard work and service of the scholars present this evening. The National Honor Society is built on four pillars, scholarship, service, leadership, and character. While we honor and congratulate the academic excellence of the inductees, we also must recognize the moral and ethics that are at the very core of what it means to be a member of the National Honor Society. To be welcomed into the esteemed Laura S. Moyer chapter of the National Honor Society, you must uphold strong core values. It is these core values, along with your commitment to service to your community, that led you here this evening. As you advance in your academic career and life path, it is important to be mindful of these pillars. Strive to make decisions while being aware of and promoting these values. It is these decisions and actions that will improve, shape, and grow our community. I ask you all to remember that induction into the National Honor Society should be looked at as the beginning of an opportunity. This opportunity is one to be embraced and built upon. As members of the National Honor Society, you are leaders. True leaders stand by their decisions, even if no one else is standing with them. Continue to do the right thing, even in the presence of adversity, and guide those around you towards positive paths. Act with confidence, and be proud of your achievements and the positive decisions that you have made. Continue to make GHS proud, and build a legacy for those that follow behind you. Please join me in congratulating this year's National Honor Society induction class. Thank you, Mrs. Lias. 
Tonight we honor our inductees for effectively demonstrating the four standards that earn membership in the National Honor Society. Scholarship, service, leadership, and character. National Honor Society members Juliana Alvarez, Kayla Vera Shaw, Ella DeMeza, and Emily Cato will now review these qualities for the candidates. We ask these students to please come forward. Scholarship. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for human education ends only when, with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life, which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past, the torch guiding us to understand the present, and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world throughout the opportunities inherent in scholarship. I will now light the candle of scholarship. Service can be established in the routine of a day's work where many opportunities arise to help others, both at schools and in our community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need, without monetary compensation or public recognition, is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and our talents to the creation of a better, better tomorrow. I will now like to call her the campus. exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, a real leader strives to train and aid others to reach a common goal of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice. The willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school, community, or nation, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. I will now light the candle leadership. Character. Character is a force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is this force of character that guides one through life and once developed grows steadily within. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be what we wish to appear by others. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example we value character. I will now light the candle of character. We would like to welcome GHS senior Amelia Baldwin to the stage where she will perform She Used to Be Mine by Sarah Barry Ellis.
tonight's keynote address, Mr. Ryan Mulligan. Mr. Mulligan is a 2008 graduate of Bozo High School. He graduated with honors from Utica College in 2012 and completed his master's degree with honors from Albany University in 2015. He has been coaching and teaching at his alma mater since 2013. Please welcome Mr. Mulligan. the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'd like to thank Ms. Riley, Ms. Hazard, and the National Honor Society for this opportunity to speak uh, to all of you today. I graciously accepted uh, a couple weeks ago, not considering that this would mean I'd have to write a speech. Um, so I prepared myself, got everything I needed at night, and sat down to run, uh, write, and as soon as I did, my son started to cry. Uh, for any of you that don't know, I have a, a nine-month-old baby at home. So I got up, put him to bed, and went back to my writing process. As usually happens, I forget everything from before, and I have to start anew. Then it dawned on me. I got so excited with this idea that I ran back upstairs, hugged him, and ran back downstairs before he started crying again because it's mom's turn to put him to bed. <laughs> what had dawned on me was that experiences lead to opportunities. Not just the good ones, but the bad ones as well. See. Becoming a father has been a wonderful experience in my life, but it has come with its challenges as well. My response to those challenges is how I've handled most things in my life. It really doesn't matter, I just have to get better. And it's the underlying message that I have, and it's written on a huge poster in the back of my classroom. When you experience things in life, both positively and negatively, it doesn't matter, just get better. Force yourself to seek the opportunities to grow. For example, when COVID happened, sure, it wasn't great, but it was an opportunity to take risks as a teacher that I never thought I could have before. As a coach, when we made it to the Section 2 title game, it was great, and I definitely celebrated. Uh, but there was no time to rest. I, I 
had to continue to improve as a coach. Finally, as it relates to this National Honor Society induction, congratulations to all of you on becoming part of this select, prestigious community. You have worked diligently and industriously up to this point, and it does matter. But continue to seek the opportunities to grow. Set the standards in your classroom for excellence. Become an exemplar in your own way. Use this as a stepping stone in achieving your academic and personal goals. As a Gloversville graduate, you would not believe the amount of pride, I mean, the amount of pride I have in seeing all of you do what you do. Being a lifelong Gloversville resident, minus a few years here in Utica, it fills me with hope that you will someday give back to the community that you came from. Like I said before, it doesn't matter what gets said about Gloversville. Just keep doing what you can to make it a better place because it, because it is not the buildings or the businesses that construct a community, but the people. Again, I would like to thank you all for this tremendous honor to speak to you tonight. Congratulations and on your continued success. To close, never mind, baby woke up again. <laughs> and it's my turn. Thank you, Mr. Mulligan, for that great speech and for all you have done for us at GHS. And now for the presentation of new members presented by Honor Society members Annabelle Frisch and Lily Jones, as well as faculty members Mr. John Savage and Ms. Emily Parcell. We ask them to please come forward. Richard Bradley Wilkinson is currently in 12th grade. He participates in a variety of activities including band, jazz band, light production for both high school and middle school drama clubs, and various activities with his church. Bradley spends every Tuesday and Thursday volunteering at the Loft, where he is an intricate part of the Loft student leader staff. He diligently serves as the head of gaming and just the stations. He is a role model for many other teams. teens. While at home, he likes to spend his free time hanging out with friends and playing music. In the future, Bradley wants to attend RIT to study either computer engineering or microelectronics. He applied for the National Honor Society because he loves to volunteer his time to others and learn new things. The pillar that resonates with him the most is scholarship because of his desire to never stop learning about things that interest him. Good evening, I have the honor have been asked to say a few words about inductee Richard, also known as Bradley Wilkinson. You have an alias, it's awesome. And I'm not checking my email, by the way, I'm reading off my iPad, so don't anybody get mad at me. First off, I was thrilled to have an oboe and band again. It's a rarity, as it takes a very adept young musician to tackle that beast of an instrument, and it is a beast. Bradley's excellence on has culminated in his selection for the recent area All-State Concert Band a few weeks ago that took place at Saratoga Springs High School. He joined select musicians from the Capital Region at a two-day event for which he was chosen based on his exceptional NISMA solo grade he received last May. Secondly, his musical prowess on other instruments has slowly become more evident over the ensuing years. He's a very capable percussionist and, not to my surprise but to my delight, an exceptional guitarist. I'm guessing he's hiding a few more abilities and a few more instruments. Maybe you'll let me in on those secrets as we go before graduation. Possibly. Good. Oh, yeah. Not as good. Lastly, but surely not least, I know from our first meeting, I knew from our first meeting that I was going to be blessed with a young man of good moral character. Bradley is a passionate person and man of great faith, but in a subtle, unobtrusive way. There's a quiet storm within him and a determination to excel at whatever tasks are set before him, especially the goals he sets for himself. For a man with a plethora of gifts and abilities, he's devoid of an ego to soothe. He succeeds at the task and knows instinctively that there's another step on the ladder and begins his climb up the ensuing rungs. I value and treasure the years we've had together and look forward to hearing of his further success as he moves forward after high school. I'm proud to help celebrate his induction into the National Honor Society, which is one of many well-deserved awards he will receive throughout the remainder of his senior year. I congratulate you, little brother, and I thank you for sharing some of yourself with me and your
working with the Junior Lady Dragons in camps and clinics. Her favorite hobbies are spending time with friends and family, traveling, shopping, and playing basketball. Her favorite subject is science because she finds it interesting. She applied to the National Honor Society because she feels that it is an honor to be a member and enjoys helping people. After high school, she plans to attend college and become an athlete trainer. Good evening, everyone. Before I start, I'd like to thank Mr. Illy for allowing me to speak on behalf of one of our scholars tonight. Um, when he reached out to me last month, my first thought was, eh, I already passed my public speaking class. But then I read his email a little further, and I saw him be speaking about Lucia Bouchard, and that's when I knew this was an opportunity I could not turn down. I've had the pleasure of teaching Lucia in my PE classes, as well as coaching her in basketball over the last two plus years. From a basketball perspective, Lucia is a dedicated player. Last year, Lucia was one of three players who would come in at 6 a.m. to shoot, attend the school day, and left after school until 4. For a high school student athlete, that's a long day, but it goes to show the solid worth of work ethic that Lucia has. On the court, Lucia always speaks up in positive ways and never puts anyone down. She is someone the younger kids in our Little and Junior Dragons program look up, look up to and is someone who the little kids are excited to learn from at clinics and camps. Off the court, Lucia participates in different community service activities, not only for her community, but for people she doesn't know. Every year, she is a part of our basketball team's annual project of hand-making Christmas cards to send to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. She also is, was part of our shopping for items to send overseas to our military men and women. As far as giving back to her community, at the end of each school year, Lucia enjoys going to Boulevard to run a station during their field day. After high school, Lucia plans to attend college as well as continue her basketball career. Her goal is to become an athletic trainer and work with Division I athletes. The last thing I want to talk about is my favorite part of being a teacher. The best thing about being an educator at the high school level is that I get to watch students grow for four years. Over the last two years and three months, Lucia has grown so much as an individual and her personality is really starting to come out. Her freshman year, she said a total of three words to me, and that's not an exaggeration. Am I right? Yep. Her sophomore year, she would mumble phrases at me and shush me every time I tried to talk to her. Currently in her junior year, she walks into my office, yells out, hey girly pop, laughs at herself, and then leaves. I'm a little nervous, but also kind of excited to see what her personality brings out the rest of this year and next year. Congratulations, Lucia, on being inducted to the National Honor Society. It was my pleasure to get to speak with you tonight. New members. New members, please rise and repeat, and repeat the pledge after me. I pledge to uphold the high purpose of the National Honor Society, to which I have been selected, to which I have been selected striving in every way, striving in every way by, word and deed, by word and deed, to make its ideals, to make its ideals the ideals of my school, and of my life. And of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me congratulate your 2022 through 2023 National Honor Society inductees. <laughs> and now our superintendent, our superintendent, Mr. David Halloran, will give his remarks. Thank you, actually. I'll just speak loudly. I'm not going to lift this up. I've been fighting this thing for five years now. <laughs> it's cooperating. Uh, Lucia and Bradley, congratulations. And as you can see by the numbers, we don't have all of our uh, members here tonight, but you join an exclusive group. We have a high school of roughly 750 students, and uh, you are joining uh, a, the select few. They're the leaders of the student body of this high school, and uh, as was said at the beginning, the Honor Society, National Honor Society is the oldest uh, organization recognizing uh, standout students in this country. Uh, 
I was a secondary educator most of my career, I spent a lot of time at the high school level, and I always enjoyed the National Honor Society induction ceremony because it really instilled a lot of faith in the next generation when you hear the great things that you students are doing, uh, service, scholarship, uh, character, and leadership. Uh, our world needs it. Our world needs you to continue to persevere, to be the solution finders, fence menders that this world so desperately needs. Uh, and as we, you know, one of the things social media has taught us, it's a double-edged sword, it's, there's a lot of time wasted and whatnot with social media, but we've also been given an inside glimpse to realize that a lot of the, the leaders that uh, <clears throat> strive for, for recognition and whatnot, uh, they're flawed individuals, and it's okay. You know, we're all works in progress. Don't worry about being uh, perfect. Don't seek perfection, just seek constant improvement and, and enjoy life. But continue recognizing that uh, you are part of something you, you, you know, I know the two families uh, that are being recognized tonight, the Wilkinson and Bouchard families, it's no mistake that they come from families that are involved in their children's lives. And as you grow older, uh, make sure that, you know, as we think about the service and the scholarship and the character and the, uh, leadership that you're being recognized for, it's probably some, also some uh, extrinsic motivation there as well that came from people who love you and who want you to thrive and succeed in life and help other people be better versions of themselves. So just take care of that forward. Uh, enjoy high school. Recognize that you got a, a lot of students who maybe don't have what you have, might not have some of the support structure at home that you, many of you have. Um, help them, lift them up. That's where, what, you know, where the rubber meets the road, in my estimation, is what you do for others. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we, we receive by giving. and. Uh, I think the students of this chapter have an awful lot to give in this world. So congratulations, enjoy your senior year, um, your, excuse me, enjoy the remainder of your high school career. I know you're not seniors yet, I'm glad about that. Um, so or Bradley, you a senior? All right, Bradley's a senior. Sorry to see you go, but uh, <laughs> we got to see you for another year, another year and a half. So uh, other members, thank you for being here tonight. Parents, congratulations, and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Halloran. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Everyone is invited to join us for a brief recession in A lobby following the recessional. Good night and congratulations once again to the inductees.